but it didn't go very well at all. They targeted a 400-ton merchant ship, the Protestant Caesar, and it proved to be far too slippery for them. <laughs> oh, this guy's so dumb. I'm sorry. Oh, no. All right, uh, what was the next one? Yes. Okay, this one is a bit of a longer one. We've talked about this for some time, but never really came across uh, watching the video. But we're going to do it tonight. But I think that this is most likely going to be a two-parter because it is that long. A man, the internet historian, friend of the channel, has a video on one of the topics of all times. Piracy. Not the criminal underground one no the good old-fashioned piracy i'm i'm excited to to see what this is about so let's uh, just jump into it oh I wanted to say Assassin's Creed Black Flag here, but these are historical characters. Most of my knowledge about pirates have been from three things. AC Black Flag, not gonna lie on that one, it has. Uh, two has been from a, an old documentary that I watched five years ago on how Treasure Island actually ended up affecting our perception of uh, pirates, because it is the film that has perpetuated the idea that pirates who had the rolling of the R in the way that they talk all the time. The R mighties and all that. No, uh, never was that. And also, the last one is... Oh, what book is this? I have a stash somewhere there, but I'll find it. Let's keep going. Hey there, man. Welcome to the stream. We're looking at pirates tonight. All events and descriptions are this can't accurate. Be it. Where's that damn letter? There has to be another way. Prisoner. Is it time? Mm-hmm. Have have you got any mail? Not today, Mr. Bonnet. Uh, are, are you oh, sure? Oh, steady Bonnet. Quite sure, come on now. You know, there really should be a letter from the governor arriving soon. Move it. Get away from the prisoner. Wait! Get back. Stop! <laughs> no! <laughs> Goodbye, pirate. Don't do it! On behalf of the Crown, for the high crime of piracy, we sentence you, Steed Bonnet, to death by hanging of the neck. <laughs> no! May God have mercy on your soul. No way! Yeah, he had by far the worst description in that Ubisoft game. Because he was actually that... He was depicted as being extremely clumsy and dumb. He didn't start off like that. To my, to my recollection, he was just one of those pirates that just did not know how to pirate and thus very much took a backseat in every single thing that he was depicted in. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I happened to push a button there. 30 years prior on the island of Barbados. The year is 1688. Meet baby Steed Bonnet. Son of wealthy sugar plantation owners, Mr. and Mrs. Bonnet. Young Steed has a brilliant life, playing with Legos and shit. But then, <laughs> in 1694, at age six, Steed's father died. Oh no! And young Steed inherited the estate and all of the responsibilities that came with it. His mother would make sure that he was brought up educated and given all of the advantages that minor nobility could offer. He was even handed the role of major in the military. And otherwise, Steve's path in life was relatively straightforward and set out for him. Until, Until. in 1709, he met his wife. <laughs> now, boys, what do we learn? When he would marry 
Mary Allenby. Steed! <laughs> Together they would have four children, three sons named Allenby, Edward, Steed! and Steed, and one daughter, Mary. Mary, could you pass the syrup? You can have syrup when you fix up this house. I was talking to our daughter. Whatever, Steed. Oh, uh, yes, Mum? Not you, your father. I'm the man of the house. Ladies first. No, yes. no give it here. Ow. 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 You need to get yourself together, Steed. Look at this place, it's in tatters. Well, fine, yes, okay, I'll take care of it. So Bonnet snuck out to the loan office. Another loan? Ah, yes. 200, please. I'm sorry. At this time, I, I, I know that there were a lot of taxation being put on the wealthy at the time. Uh, yeah. Plantation owners. But despite you being taxed to hell... With the amount of earnings that you've made, I would believe that fixing the house and not having to rely on taking a government loan should not be necessary. Come now. Well, I can give you 100. What? We can't keep doing this, Bonnet. You're $1,700 in debt. You're oh. a lost cause. But I have a family and a sick chair boy. I missed the part where that's my problem. I've got a boy as well, you know. He's a little shit. <laughs> ah, well, I'll I'll take the hundred then. Bonnet solemnly returned back home, money in hand. So, one hundred pounds ought to do it. Where's that syrup? That won't even be enough to pay the workers this season. I know. It's not good enough. The farmstead needs repair. A gust of wind and it could fall over at any moment. The farmstead is fine. Look at it. Oh. Well, at least it can't get any worse. But two oh, weeks later, it, it did get much worse. In fact, a hurricane came along and destroyed pretty much everything. Ow. Steve! <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it. More and more stress was being piled onto Steed's shoulders. Family problems compounded by money problems. And uh, starts the relationship with the privateers. <laughs> How come you're dressed like a pirate? I, cause I be a pirate. And you need a loan. I. <laughs> Not all bells and whistles, is it? It's Jack Sparrow at home. To be sure. Cool. Come on then, Steve. <laughs> Let's get this over with. Okie dokie. Well, well. Yes, I know, I know, but look, I'm in deep shit here. Please, I'll be happy with anything you can give me. Hmm. Uh, all right, then. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> here you go. Don't spend it all at once. Really? Oh, no. That's about what you're worth, Bonnet. Now get out of here. <sighs> ah, how can I help you today, sir? Money or your life? Will you take my son instead? <laughs> what am I supposed to do now? What kind of life is this? Just going deeper and deeper into debt. Oh, ow. You're huh? Me up. Hey, someone stop that guy. Arr, uh, arr, matey. Hi, cheers, matey. Why did you let him get away? Ah, uh, here we go, the Spider-Man line. I can't see how that's any part of my problem. I missed the part where that was my problem. Yay! <laughs> wow, what a guy. I wish that were me. <laughs> Come on, mate. <laughs> Is that the Navy? <laughs> Jesus Christ, I love his editing. What is this? Where am I? Can anyone hear me? What? Mama! 
Papa! Quick Photoshop is awesome. I don't understand. This feeling, so strange, like a bird. <laughs> Yo! Car, car, Captain Bonnet! What did you say? Car! The greatest pirate who ever lived! Captain <laughs> Bonnet! 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 <laughs> Are you getting up? <laughs> Are you even listening to me? You're always looking at the stupid old boat. No. Dad, help! The wedge has come loose! <laughs> the wedge! In 1715. No. <laughs> no. A child. Now, I'm certain that a child died of some. <laughs> what would be presumed at the time to be natural causes. <laughs> died of natural causes. Gravity. Yeah. I find it more hilarious that the mom actually killed it. Steed's son, Ellenby, died. <laughs> Steed had finally reached his limit. No more. Today is the day. Listen, kids. Allenby was like a son to me, and... Anyway, <laughs> it's time off. for me to go. <laughs> and just like that, Steed walked away from his family. The world better be ready for Captain... Captain Bonnet. Unlike a lot of privateers who were actually straight up honest businessmen, honest, well, like Sir Francis Drake, who was employed by the British government to basically become a private pirate who, who did it legally, so yeah, hence the term, who found out that the British crown were just being too much under us with taxation and therefore decided to take the privateering to more extreme manners and became pirates. This guy was just a failure. He he straight up messed up all of his businesses. And then decided that, oh no, you know what? I'm just going to leave my family behind. It's not that I'm doing this to provide for them, but... No, I just don't want to. It's beautiful. <laughs> wow. uh, excuse me are you looking to have a ship built uh yes please well we can do that for you ah uh, perfect then my pirating adventures can finally begin pirating you know you know most pirates just steal their ships when i'm not like the other pirates <laughs> well clearly i also hold rank in the military all right come with me so Steed rounded up any trinkets or heirlooms he could get from home and what little left of his inheritance and commissions to have a ship built. A sloop outfitted with ten cannons, enough room for two score men, and even a library. Wow. I need something intimidating sounding. Something really scary. <laughs> the boys. I'm almost ready. No way, he named it after the Queen Anne's Revenge. All right. I need now is a crew. Of course, the Salty Spittoon. He waltzed into the roughest, toughest bar in town. I'd like to hire 70 of your roughest, toughest men, please. <laughs> and uh, one quarter. We spoke of Jack's film. <laughs> there he is. Quartermaster too, please. I'll be your quartermaster, sir. No. I'll be your quartermaster. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Thank you, Captain. Oh, and you can be the boatswain. Steve would lean heavily on the quartermaster because he had no idea what the hell he was doing. So anyway, Steve and his crew went to the Revenge to begin their journey of pirates. <laughs> It's spring 1717 and everything was ready. 
Steve was prepared to do his first pirating ever and start like his life music. He paused. Am I am I making the right decision? <laughs> yeah. Let's go, man. And so I heard her voice, more haunting than the wailing of a siren. <laughs> and just like that, I was adamant that it this this life, the pirate life, was the one that I was to set my path on. Wait, are they all Steve's on the boat? Yes, they are. Ah, oh my god, that's Now gods. the great that's Steve Bonnet like. sets sail on his first journey to be the greatest pirate alive. Nay, the greatest pirate to ever have been alive. It is my destiny. What's our first move, Captain? Ah, okay. So, Quartermaster, what do we even do? Well, sir, there's a colony near Chesapeake Bay that has some fairly expensive ships roaming around. Right, let's go there. So they set sail for the east coast of the New World. So, Quartermaster, must be getting close now. Sir, we've been sailing for less than an hour. Boy. Just a quick comment to the design of this is great because it reminds me a lot of Monty Python movies. Like the whole mixture of 2D, 3D and all like what is extremely static and <laughs> the free flowing animation in the background. It's, it's beautiful. So like another 15 minutes or so? Actually, it will take a few weeks, Captain. Oh, shit. Oh. Uh, well, what the hell do you guys do to pass the time? Oh, there's plenty to do. Sing shanties, tie knots, get scurvy. Wow. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. <laughs> uh, I guess I could read some more. Feel free to borrow any books you want, lads. Just don't get them wet. Ah, uh, Captain, most pirates can't read. Yeah. Seriously, you guys can't read. <coughs> yeah, they're literate. Well, I guess I could read to you if you want. Yeah. Woo, woo. Awesome. Great. No. <laughs> well, 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 gather around, lads. This one's a doozy. Chapter One. The Very Hungry Caterpillar. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop out of the egg. Chapter 108. The Very Hungry Caterpillar is on trial for his war crime. Captain. Ship the <laughs> Captain. <laughs> Yo, that caterpillar, <laughs> what has he done? What do we do? It's a merchant vessel. Your orders, Captain. Uh, um, uh, uh, quick, we need to forward mark on the port with the riggings um, and the cannons. Mate. So, do a 360 ollie around their back, um, the, at the back of the boat. Not their backs. The boat, the back of the Arr. boat. Uh, Captain, you'd better get changed quickly into your combat uniform. We're going to need your bravery to lead the charge. Yes, I'll, I'll be right back. Okay, men, bring the ship around the starboard side. We're opening fire on Mark. Yeah, the quartermaster would be handling everything here. I see that. Being a pattern for the rest of the video. His incompetence in piracy is most likely going to be his downfall. And perhaps a bit of naivete. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Prepare the boards. Powder the cannons. Three paper only. The remaining all chain shot. We give warning, but get ready for a chase. Oh. Yeah. Stand by. Sir, impeccable timing. We're waiting on your count. Uh. Count down from three and say fire. Oh. Uh, three, two, two, fire. Oh. Uh -huh. They open fire on the merchant ship, and it quickly surrendered. Wow. Over the next few months, they sailed all around Delaware, sometimes having a little success and sometimes falling off their face. <laughs> they had captured and plundered four ships <laughs> near Virginia and two more near New York. When another fled to Barbados to spread the word of their piracy, they chased it down and burnt it to ashes. Wow. Now, a quick lesson on pirating. What happens on a typical pirate ship is that you plunder someone else's vessel and split the booty among the crew. However, yep. Steed would do things differently. Dibs. No split. Instead, his crew would receive wages. Wow. 
That's that's surprisingly clever. That's a nice way of getting everybody engaged. It's a contract for life. Like, okay, this despite oh, oh unless you commit something so horrendous that your man decide to commit mutiny, then this is actually a pretty good way of doing it. <laughs> yes, it's a subscription service for piracy. That's great. Successful plunder or not. Too good to be true, eh, lads? That way, they could rely on a regular income. Arr, not a bad idea. Arr, in principle. Arr. In principle. Passing through the Carolinas, they took two more ships, using one of them to repair the Revenge herself. There Despite his inexperience, black black music. Steed was already gaining a name for himself. Being a literate man, a man of status turned criminal, and known for never harming the crews of the boats he plundered, eventually he earned himself the title of the Gentleman Pirate. Let's step things up a notch, wow. lads. Set sail for the Bahamas Nassau. We're going to... The Pirate City. Arr! Captain, Mano wore off the starboard side. It's heading right for us. Oh, mateys, that's our next victim. Arr! A warship, Captain? Arr -har? A bit dangerous, don't you think, Captain? Don't no, it. Quartermaster. It be tiny, she'll be fine. Sir, you may find that it gets larger as we approach. <laughs> the great pirate steed fears no fleet, nor a puny vessel that dareth approach me. Oh, God. It's a man of war. <laughs> it's a man of war. I repeat, it's a man of war. Have you seen the size of him? Okay, let's, let's quickly have a gander here. 60 meters long. So the average man of war... We said it was 6 meters and 77 guns. Okay, here. Def depending on the period ships, line carried between 32 and 144 guns. Arranged in 3 and sometimes 4 decks. Meaning that if said ship were to come by starboard and my dude here was thinking to himself, Oh no, no, I'm the mighty steed. With my small ship, four rows of guns will have obliterated him in a single shot. Man ye stations, quartermaster. Very well, Captain. Oh my, that is a big boy. Bonnet and his crew attack the enormous warship. This is generally regarded as a bad move. Oh, 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 oh god! Oh. The revenge was absolutely dominated with a full half of Steed's crew either injured or dead by the end of the fight. But Bonnet himself was also badly wounded. Retreat! But the Revenge manages to scramble away and head for the pirate city of Nassau. Pulling into Nassau, Bonnet replenishes his crew, repairs his ship, and picks up some more supplies. Limping up the docks, Bonnet happened to bump into a couple of pirates you may have heard of. Blackbeard. Benjamin Hornigold and Edward Teach. Although you may know Edward by his other name, Blackbeard. And of course he uses the models from Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Let's go. Arr, that's quite a limp you got there, Captain. Ah, what can us pirates say? Tis but an injury of war. I was dodging cannonballs and stubbed me toe on the dresser. Arr, I see. But, uh, uh, I, um, I took out like 80 guys with um, just one pistol. Yeah, you, sh you should have seen it. Arr, sounds like quite the battle. Yes, although I need to put up for a while, recover from my injuries, restock, regroup, you know. The evening carried on and the drinks flowed. <laughs> Can I, uh, yeah, I got something to tell you. I like how the moon rose <laughs> from the sea. I'm I'm in a lot of pain over here, I, and I I think I'm a little in over my head. But I can't let the men see me weak. They rely on me for their booty. Arr, the seas take a toll on a man. You know, when I had a ship, I had a similar problem. R really? I. You know how I fixed it? I had a temporary shadow captain. Oh, it was the best. He took care of everything and even taught me a thing or two while I could sit back and read a book. Blackbeard, did you really do that? Is he going to take over his crew? 
Yeah, interesting. Arr. And everyone thought I was still leading everything, and we made tons of cash. And when I was better, he simply handed back the keys. Ah, it was wonderful. I think I might do it again soon. Mm, but I'm sure it's not your thing. No, wait. Uh, that sounds perfect. Where, where, where can I find someone like that? Arr, that'd be tough. Hmm. You need someone strong and experienced. Someone who inspires confidence with a black beard, preferably. Black beard. <laughs> I have an incredible idea. Oh, go on. Would you be my temporary shadow captain? Wow, I am shocked. This truly came out of nowhere. I'll have to give it some thought. Oh, oh please, you simply must. All right, fine. You twisted me arm. Excellent. I'll make the preparations. I've already started loading my stuff on board. <laughs> oh. Arr, arr, arr. Gather around, gather around. I'd like you all to meet our new vice president of nautical coordination, the infamous Blackbeard. Oh, so now there's going to be a bit of a squabble between him and the quartermaster. Because, well, he was eating him before Blackbeard came on board, yeah? Wow. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> uh, Captain? Uh, Captain, are you sure this is a good idea? Ooh, you suck! Of course <laughs> it is! And I'm tired of you second-guessing the Captain. Uh, thank you, pal. With Blackbeard and his crew of tough boys on our side, we'll be unstoppable. Very well, sir. How embarrassing. Right in front of our new guest, too. You're not gonna let him off the hook, are you, Captain? Uh, Wait! No. In fact, you know what, Quartermaster? I've had enough of the back chat. I'm demoting you to one eighth master. Ignatius Pell will be my new Quartermaster. Aye, aye. As you wish, sir. Well, then it's settled. Let us set sail and make our way to the place where all of the greatest treasures are kept. Well, first Delaware, and now a new adventure. The most exciting place in the whole world. <laughs> Delaware, again! Yay! <laughs> so they set off again to Delaware. But this time, Blackbeard could see firsthand what Bonnet was really like as a captain. Time to help out my crew. Bitchin'. Do -do -do -do. Do -do -do -do. Whoops! You don't want to trip. I'll hang that up for you. Ah, that'll get it nice and clean. Who's got the tidy whities <laughs> Just kidding, them. Yeah, they're mine. Boom. Gotcha. Wee! Wee! Ah, it's strike! Oi! In other words, he was the worst. Ever seen this one, boys? I call it the uh, the human cannonball. The, hang, hang on, lads. I'm stuck. I, I'm I'm claustrophobic. Please, I'm scared. Look at me, guys. I am man girl. Icarus can eat my ass. Captain Bonnet. Yes, Blackbeard. Could ye join me for a moment? What's up, BB? You're looking a bit pale, Captain. Maybe you should rest up for a little while longer. Uh, I, I feel pretty good, actually. Captain, I you are insist. <laughs> exciting, exciting stuff out there. Oh, sir? Yes, uh, top secret, I'm afraid. Can't tell you. But uh, so much treasure is going to be happening. Soon. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> sir. Idiot. Yes. If I may... Can I just tell you a brief anecdote? Uh, go on. Well, the last ship I worked on was called the Quintessential. It was a beautiful vessel, and it was helmed by a wonderful captain. But he constantly had <laughs> bad luck. Eventually, the captain brought on board a deputy, or shadow captain, if you will. What? Son of a bitch. <laughs> You've got to do this. Okay, yeah, I see the parallels, though. They, they do a fit. Where's this going? Well, sir, the deputy was very effective. He was experienced and cunning, and soon they had a lot of success. 150 barrels of nutmeg, silver from China, 
It was a time of plenty, and everyone was happy about it. Hmm? So happy, sir, and all the crew wanted it to continue indefinitely. They attributed their success to the new deputy. And, of course, it ended with the deputy becoming the captain. Okay, I think I see where this is going. Aye, sir. So after they cut off the head of the old captain and threw it into the ocean, and then abandoned the rest of us on Nassau... Wait, what? Don't listen to him, Captain. Blackbeard would never try to take your crew or your ship. The Eighth Master's just trying to undermine your better judgment. <laughs> no, not at all. Blackbeard already has a crew. A small crew. Well, as quartermaster, I side with the captain. Enough. My men love me, and I love them. Like a father loves his chair. See you later, kids. But at that, that, uh, mm, that. <laughs> yeah, I was about to call him out on this bullshit. But yeah, <laughs> idiot. Bad example. But that's not going to happen. I trust Blackbeard, and that's enough squabbling between you two. Huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> oh. How's the toe this morning? Good. Still a still a long road ahead, though. I glad to hear it. Captains. Captain, j just one. Yes. Anyway, vessel ahead. Men at the ready. You are. You are. You are. What followed next was a series of successful raids and takeovers. Blackbeard would intimidate the crews and was a lot less polite than Steed about taking what he wanted. Yeah. He was known for putting the fear of death and torture into his targets. Yeah, the rumors of him actually employing um, gunpowder, sometimes even pretending to to light it up on himself. There's a strategy that he also does in the game that was supposedly true, that he would light up his beard as well. To make it look like he had like the flames of hell rising that that was coming with him and stuff like that like yeah he did focus a lot on using mind games to intimidate people and it worked although records show he never actually killed anyone attack you are, you are. attack you, you are. are a string of successful heists Oh my god, Blackbeard is a heart right now. Attack! You are. You are. Attack! You are. You are. It wasn't long before they were one of the most feared and successful crews on all the seas. Dang. Blackbeard had made them rich, made them confident. It was everything Steed had wanted to achieve. To the captain, you are. Thank you, thank you, you're too kind, really. Oh yeah. Woo! Is that all you had in you, lads? Let's get those cheers going. Woo! Woo! All right. Almost there. Woo! That's uh, embarrassing. Yeah. Excuse me, friendo. Someday though, right, pal? <coughs> anyway, big thanks. With Blackbeard at the helm, the men went on to plunder 11 ships near Delaware Bay. Their bad luck had turned around. Black Blackbeard. Blackbeard. But Steed could feel that with each passing day, he had less and less control over the situation. Of course. Hey lads, uh, want me to read tonight? Still got a few chapters left. New Blackbeard. Feeling pretty Red tired Wars. tonight, Captain. Another time, maybe. Oh, okay. Oh. No problem. Still recovering from his injury, he would hobble around the deck, book in hand, with nothing to do but mentally wrestle with the situation. Bonnet and Blackbeard sailed back to the Caribbean, where they made one last booty plunder together. It was a 200-ton ship named the Concorde. <laughs> and not only did they take the cargo, but they took the vessel as well. And Blackbeard went, This one's much nicer. This will be my main ship now. Blackbeard sailed on to the Grenadines, where he renamed his ship the Queen Anne's That's Revenge. Revenge. And then yeah. Blackbeard and Bonnet simply parted ways. He actually gave back the ship. How's the toe? Oh, 
Much better. Ready to go again. So that's how it happened. Because the Concorde was a massive one. That was the one that I alluded to in the beginning of the video as being the Queen Anne's Revenge. But yeah, okay. So the original name came from Steve Bonnet, the Revenge. Okay. Wasn't aware of this. Here you go. Here's your ship and your crew back. Thanks. Arr, no worries. No shot. He actually didn't take it. I, I, I thought that he was going to do that, that thing that the Quartermaster alluded to. But okay, Blackbeard was actually honest. What a chat. And everything went back to normal. Bonnet sailed onto the West Caribbean with his crew, and Blackbeard went to Nassau. See, eighth master, everything went great. I have my ship and my crew back. Except that the crew is not going to be too fond of not being able to perform in the same way anymore. Didn't think about that. I told you. I'm pleased for you, Captain. And for us as well. Right. Now let's do one more job, but this time without the training wheels on. Hey, lads? Aye. Let my great pirate legacy continue! Arr. But the Eighth Master could read the men better than Steed could. He knew that they were fickle. They now had a measuring stick for what successful pirating looked like, and if Steed couldn't live up to the kind of leadership that Blackbeard could offer, they would very quickly reassess their <laughs> options. The back of their heads. <laughs> Ah, it's March 1718. I'll do the exposition for a bit. We sailed around Honduras for the last couple of months, not doing a whole lot really, but getting ready and burning through supplies. And now we're about to plunder our first vessel since Blackbeard left, and we're just so excited. It's going to go very well. But it didn't go very well at all. They targeted a 400-ton merchant ship, the Protestant Caesar, and it proved to be far too slippery for them. Oh, this guy's so dumb. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Which his tiny ship and targeted that? After a brief fight, it escaped, and all that Steed was able to acquire were a few injuries for his crew. His men had had enough. Um, just gonna, uh, um, pop to the little boy's room. Back in a bit, fellas. Help. This isn't good. They're going to revolt. We should return to port immediately. Um, well, uh, okay, 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 no, um, uh, 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 uh. Sir? Oh. I've had a word with the men, sir. There seems to be a general consensus of discontent. No shit! Are they gonna do a mutiny? Sir, I think the situation is nearly that dire, but if you do plan to return to shore, I would caution against it. Yeah, you would. Sir, if you dock, the crew will abandon you entirely. It's yep. hardly a better situation than a mutiny. And once docked, you'll be defenseless to stop anyone from seizing the revenge. So what do I do? <sighs> Calm reassurance and a small victory, sir. Double down. Gamble on one more plunder. Ha, yeah, Captain. He's saying that because he knows if they mutiny, the men would put him in charge. That's not the reason. Jeez. Although that's not the worst outcome either. The men trust me. I can ensure that you're unharmed and we can take you back to the port from there. It would be no worse than the predicament uh, we are already you in. You made me your quartermaster for a reason and demoted this guy for undermining you at every step. Either we go to port or I'm done. Sir, there is only one option here to maintain your ship and crew. Let's go back to Nassau. Very well, sir. I will ready the men for port. <laughs> you have to <laughs> He has the best, he has the best expressions in this. So they returned to Nassau, where Blackbeard was also stationed. The moment they hit the dock, just as the Eighth Master predicted, the men abandoned Steed. Easy lads, that's okay. Hey now, whoa. And seeing Blackbeard was in town, they headed straight for him. Black beard. black beard, take us back. We need you, Black Beard. Black Beard. Black beard. Let's talk. Uh, that's about what happened. 
Anyway, do you think you can help convince them to stay with me and not mutiny? Drinks, gentlemen. Oh, yes, please. Can I have a glass of... Oof. Listen here, Bonnet. You are the most incompetent pirate I have ever seen in my entire life. Uh... You think I like being a pirate? We weren't all born with rich parents who could send us to school to learn to read and write. Oh, I can read Shut you. up. For me, it was this or unloading cargo in Bristol like my father before me. Until yeah. me back gives in and I'm lying in the gutter. I- Shut up. This isn't a game. And I haven't got any time for some boy who wants to play pirate. I'm putting my second in command, Richards, in charge of the revenge. Your crew is mine. Consider yourself a hostage. I'll see to it that you're not harmed. But one step out of line, I could leave you here with nothing. Stranded. No ship. No crew. How long do you think you'll last with your face plastered on wanted posters all over the Caribbean? You're lucky I'm giving you the option. So which is it? Well, it's aye, about aye. time that he got that wake-up call. Waitress! Yes, sir. Rum. Of course, sir. Drink. It is time to go now. God, I miss Black Flag. And so, Steed was effectively a hostage on his own ship. Well, uh, I'm all done, mateys. Are you? I think you missed a spot. Where? No. Right there. Richards. 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 Arming. And from now on, we're going to be doing things the right way, Yar. Aristide. Oh, uh, Captain, can I can I help you? As a matter of fact, you can, Bonnet. You're needed at the home. Really? Oh, uh, it hasn't been mopped yet. Ooh. Oh, oh, my pride! It hurts. <laughs> what have I done? What do I do? Maybe I. No, you do not jump. Steedy. Steedy. Huh? Who, who's there? Look, Look up, up Steedy. Steedy. It's, it's your, your dead, dead father, father Steedy. Steedy. <laughs> Papa? Yes, yes Steedy. Steedy. Listen, Listen, my son. son. Don't, Don't give, give up, up Steedy. Steedy. Believe, Believe in yourself. But Papa, what do I do? Believe in yourself, Steedy. Give me guidance, Papa. The One Piece! <laughs> the One Piece is real! I must, I must go, go now. now. Remember to never, never stop, stop not, not giving up, up son. So you just got here? I'm, I'm, I'm going, going through, through a tunnel. tunnel. I've got to go. Papa! Steedy. May, 1718. Vessel up, head captain. Looks like we've got ourselves a new ship. Grab the captain and take the vessel. Oh shit, in it! Ouchie! Oh, that hurts! Co- from now on, you captain your ship under my flag, or you walk the plank. Understood? How close is land, in it? Not close. All right, I'll join you. Welcome to the fleet. Throw them in Bonnet's quarters. Who in the world?
First time having your ship taken over? No. Then I'm in good company. Steed Bonnet. David Ariat. In it. Nice to meet you, Harriet. Blackbeard continued pirating around right. the Caribbean, but his recent successes had come at a high cost, and many of his men were badly injured. They needed medicine, and they were wanted by authorities pretty much everywhere. With few options left, Blackbeard made a very bold move. He sailed into Charleston, dropped anchor, and blockaded the entire port. Oh, oh my god, it's Blackbeard. I hate pirates. Blackbeard attacked any merchant ships attempting to flee, and he took some of them hostage as well for bargaining. This is widely considered one of the boldest moves any pirate has ever made. Yeah, you know. Now, don't the governor say. of Charleston, Robert Johnson, was feeling the pressure of the pirates on his doorstep. He gave in to Blackbeard's demands. Here goes in the plot of uh, Black Sails. I'm Colonel Rhett. I have your medicine. Yay, medicine! Well, well, the gentleman pirate is here as well. Oh, um, hi. <laughs> Look, men, his eyes are red. He looks like he's been crying. <laughs> Let us all laugh. <laughs> nuh uh. A captain working under Blackbeard, huh? Doesn't seem voluntary to me, lads. Ha ha ha. We shall laugh twice. Ha ha ha. All right, captain. Playtime's over. Let the grown ups talk. Steed, that's enough. Go inside. <laughs> yeah, go inside, Bonnet. I hate being a pirate. Not fair. Hand the medicine over. Very well. And what about the hostages? Dangerous Nothing game you're playing, BB. My men will be seeing you soon. True to his word. <laughs> Did you bring the game up? <laughs> yeah, that's for healing. With the medicine, Blackbeard freed the hostages and broke the blockade. Over in England, King George has decided to take action. Right. This is dumb, but Blackbeard isn't. We're not going to catch him. I think it's time we negotiated with this guy. He passed the Act of Grace, which yeah. granted clemency to pirates who renounced their piratey way. Yep, and that's why so many of them actually shifted back to, like, like privateering work actually served some of them in the past. To, to work for the government. The likes of Sir Francis Drake, who did that. <laughs> Drake, that guy. Um, yeah. I don't know if... I can't remember if Blackbeard actually accepted it. I, I, I don't think he did. And even offered them work as pirateers on behalf of the Crown to pirate against the Spanish. Um, who was the one that was... Benjamin Hornigold. Yeah, he did. He did do that. He did accept a pardon. News of the act spread quickly, but it was hard for pirates to know if it was actually true. What if it was all a ruse? What would stop prosecutors from simply reneging on the deal? Yeah. June 1718. Blackbeard's fleet sailed for Topsail Island to rest and refit their vessels. When they arrive at shore, Bonnet and Blackbeard were informed about the royal pardon. An act of grace? Wow, whoa, wee wow, nice! Richards, a moment. Oh my god, Blackbeard and Richards are so hot right now. So, Barnet? Yes? We've got a fair amount of stuff, and I'm ready to retire. We're gonna take the deal. What about oh. you? Uh, count me in. Sounds, sounds great. Hey, um, Barnet. Yes, Captain? You know how, like, we're really good buddies. We've been through a lot. No. Uh -oh. I've got a bit of the, uh, um, scurvy, I think. <laughs> uh, me too. <laughs> oh, 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 no. Yeah, exactly. So, I was thinking, would you be able to go and accept our pardons on our behalf? Yeah, of course they will send him oh, there, as a scapegoat. You're totally right. So that he could test if the thing actually was true. Uh, yeah, I, I could do that. So he was given his own small sailing vessel and set out to acquire a couple of get-out-of-jail-free cards. Bath. 
North Carolina. God, I hope this is real. And it was real. Bonnet received a full pardon from Governor Charles Eden and requested a clearance to take the revenge to the Denmark Caribbean colony of St. Thomas, where he planned to yep. begin privateering against the Spanish Navy. Dios mío, no! He also collected Blackbeard's pardon. Things were turning around. He had become a somewhat successful pirate, and he had just been given a job. Brilliant. So, Bonnet returned eagerly to Topsail Island to retrieve the revenge. However, upon finding his vessel, he realized that he had been betrayed. Blackbeard had stripped the revenge of all of its valuables. Bonnet's crew had been left marooned on a sandbar nearby. Well, this sucks. So are we going to starve to death here? We'll probably die of thirst or exposure before that. Well, that's what we get for trusting Blackbeard. Amen. We need to put our trust in Steed once again. He will be the one who comes back for us. I know he will. I couldn't catch any fish. <laughs> What do we do? Calm down, Harriet. You calm down, mutton chops, in it. Barnacle boy. <laughs> Enough. In it. So hungry, so weak, head spinning. Oh boy. In it. Oh, what are we gonna do? We wait. We wait and we pray that Steed will get to us in time. It's kind of gay, but hey. <laughs> what is that? Captain, Captain, Captain. Hang on. Before you all make peace, let's get something straight. Sure, maybe Steve isn't the bravest. Maybe he's not the brightest either. Or very tough. And he's kind of skittish sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, he, he has the sucks. heart of a captain. He could have left us on that sandbar to die. And yet here we are. What were we before, Steed? Gamblers? Drunks? Second-rate pirates without a vessel? Without leadership? Bonnie. Yeah. We Bonnet. owe our lives to this man. Now let's hear it. Captain Bonnet. We'll follow you to the end, Captain. Captain Bonnet. Yeah, you lads, I'm no longer no. a pirate. Don't cheer for me yet, man. Woo woo. Oh. You can do that later. But for now, no more Mr. Nice Pirate. Blackbeard robbed me of my dignity, he robbed me of my ship, and now I don't even have the means to become a privateer. Jesus Christ. was done being walked over, he set out to hunt down Blackbeard. Quartermaster, it's time to get serious. I admit it, I've been a shit captain until now, but I've hit rock bottom. I'll do anything to make this work. Teach me. We'll make a captain out of you yet, sir. And guys, this is where we're going to keep it for part one. Holy shit. The training arc with a montage will come tomorrow. It was the second part tomorrow. I'm live streaming this. Have a good night, gentlemen. And drink enough... <laughs> drink enough and eat enough fruit so that you don't get scurvy.